Let's jump to another team that I think what I just said about Baylor, where they've got three guys who could be the best player on the floor any given night. That could apply to this team when fully healthy. I'm talking about the Arkansas Razorbacks, who have really impressed me this season. This team is way further along than I thought they would be, given that Nick Smith has been in and out of the lineup. When it comes to a resolution, I'm going to Nick Smith getting in and out of the lineup. They need a new health care plan because this guy, Nick Smith, man, I think he's been seeing Shaden Sharp's doctors a little too much. He's out indefinitely. He's, he's managing that right knee. I don't know how much a knee needs management. I don't know. And I'm, I hope I say with all seriousness, I hope the kid gets healthy. I hope he is healthy. I hope we get to see him play at whatever level that is. I love his game. If the next time we see him play is in an NBA uniform, that's awesome. I can't wait for that day. But he is the difference between this Arkansas team just being a good team and a great team. When you take what you've gotten from Anthony Black so far this season, when you take what you've gotten from Ricky Council, which I definitely didn't see coming from his previous stops in his career, I think all this team's missing is one more guy who's that next level shot creator. That's what Nick Smith could be. We just haven't gotten to see it enough yet this season. Rob. Agree or disagree with that? Can this because because I guess my my premise here is I don't think Arkansas can contend nationally without Nick Smith. I think Nick Smith would move the needle and get them there. This is all I have to say, Greg. In Muss, we trust. That's all I have to say. In Muss, we trust. Um, I think my understanding of the Nick Smith situation is it's a little bit of like a load management kind of a deal, right? Like they're just trying to make sure that um, this thing is not going to be something that bothers him when you get into the meat of SEC play. It's not going to be something that he is bothering him when you get into March. So if it means that he's going to have to miss some time against like Bradley or UNC, like whatever, they're winning those games. I'm, I'm not that concerned about it. Um, my big question with this team, and I think uh, what my resolution um, here would be is embrace the Jordan Walsh as a center revolution. I think that if you look back at the best teams that Muss has had, He's had guys like that playing the five for him. Even when you go back to the Nevada days, right? I think that when you play one, I think Jordan Walsh is uh, tough enough and crazy enough to be able to play the five as a freshman in a league like that. Um, I think we saw it with the, who was, remember Justin Smith, the kid that transferred there from Indiana in the 2021 season. Um, when they moved him to the five is when Arkansas went on their big run down the stretch of the season. I think they won like 14 straight after they moved him to the five. Um, last season, once they moved Jalen Williams there and started playing him at the five full time, that's when they went on their big run. It's finding that perfect five man to make everything work. And if you can give me Nick Smith, Ricky Council, Anthony Black, Devo Davis, and Jordan Walsh, you give me those five, that's as switchable as you're going to find. That's as difficult to guard as you're going to find. That's as athletic as you're going to find. You have three guys that can go out there and create a shot against anybody at any time. Devo Davis, if he's your fourth option, that's a pretty damn good fourth option. And you have the most athletic, aggressive junkyard dog player in college basketball and Jordan Walsh. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. And if worse comes to worse and you got to throw one of the Mitchell twins at the five and you got to mix things up, you got guys that can do it. You got guys that can kind of uh, give you fouls more or less against someone like an Oscar Sheboy. So that's kind of where I stand at with it. But for the most part, if there's anything that we've known over the last couple of years, it's that in must we trust. Feel the 68. I guess my, my my question on that is again, is how much of when they get into conference play, how much is their athleticism go over, overwhelm people when they get in the conference? I think that balances out a little bit. And then the injuries, I wonder how much that's going to affect Ricky Council. I think he needs those other guys around him to do what he's done. And it's been a surprise. I mean, I'm happy for him. It's been great. But can he continue this as they get in the conference play? Because I mean, he's going to have the million dollar question, right? Yeah, he's going to have other elite athletic guys, and I think they've done that leading up to this. But when they get in the conference play for a team that's not, it's not a great shooting team. I mean, this team doesn't shoot at the best. They're not a great shooting team, and so you're going to have to overwhelm people with bodies, and 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 they're going to need to be healthy to do that. So, you know, we got to they got to get they got to get Nick Smith back. I mean, he's got to be back. He's got to be healthy, and and I think they they'll right. be there in the end. Yeah, the, the one thing that I will add, and then, Greg, we can move on to the next team, is that I think that Trevon Brazil's injury is one of the kind of like the most disappointing that I like I can remember in a while, just because of one, the breakup that he had, two, 
the role that he plays for this team in terms of being a rim protector and being a five man that can pull defensive defenses away from the basket. And three, the fact that when he's out there, then we're talking about a team that has J- Ricky Council, Trevon Brazil, and and, and uh, Jordan Walsh, who are three of the best athletes that you're going to find in college basketball. Like they were as entertaining as any team in the country to watch. So it sucks that he's out, man. Injuries suck. Maybe yeah. get him some of that HGH that we got for uh, Obamacare, baby. You got to give him some Obamacare. <laughs> but no, That's seriously, it. I thought his injury when he went down for a team I thought had unlimited potential. I thought that was an injury that it, it, you don't want to say it's over. But for where we thought this team could be early on, when he went down, it was like, man, I, I felt amazing, bad right? for him and I felt bad for the team because I you just couldn't replace it. I, I just don't think they can replace it. And I'm not going to sit here and say what they can't do, but I don't see them. Whereas before it was like, if you would have told me to see you in Houston, we'll see them in Houston. I wouldn't have argued. Yeah. Now I have my, my one. My one counterpoint to that is they are still, for my money, the only team in college basketball that has three guys and potentially four that could end up being first round picks. I think Jordan Walsh, Anthony black and Nick Smith all end up being first round picks. I think Ricky council is one of those guys that goes in like the 31 to 42, like an early second rounder. Give me your, give me, give me the best one. They don't like, they don't really have one San Diego state probably. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I just think when they get in the conference play, we got to see. They're gonna have to make some shots. They're gonna be some adjustments being made, and we'll see. I, I thought the injury to Brazil, I, I, Brazilia, I, I just don't know how they overcome that. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I agree. I wouldn't play the win game with Arkansas because you're, you're right. They had Creighton, they had San Diego State, they had Oklahoma. They lose to Creighton by three, but that was one of the best games of the season. They got the win against San Diego State in overtime. Oklahoma. I mean, it's Oklahoma. I don't love that roster, but comfortable win on a neutral is a solid win. Uh, I just I worry about the continuity of it, right? Like if you're really going to play the quote unquote load management game with a guy as talented as Nick Smith, I think there are side effects of that on a college team that you would never see at the NBA level where it's Mm -hmm. such a thing with every single franchise. And I know like maybe they get through that if Brazil stays healthy, but they're already thin in that regard. So the sooner you can get Smith back, the more it opens up opportunities long term.